when I say uh, Kabul or Kandahar, what comes to your mind? Hope, insecurity, transition, election, uncertainty. Mm. Why do you love Afghanistan so? It's the most diverse, the most dynamic, the most beautiful country. I spend some of my best time in the country, and uh, this is where I'm from. Uh -huh. uh, born and raised, and then uh, schooling, uh, and then uh, moving to uh, Germany and the United States and such. We've been there for this time around, as I say, 13 years, I guess. It's something like that. Uh, it's still a blank slate, isn't it, for so many Americans? When you're uh, traveling around and meeting people, what are the people just don't know about? We just don't know, huh? They know a lot more than before. And, and uh, those who have served, for instance, in Afghanistan, yes. they, surprisingly, uh, they know more, they care more about Afghanistan, uh, despite the fact that they were sent to some of the toughest places in the world to mm -hmm. do some of the toughest assignment. Yeah. But they continue actually to, to, to care about the country. So I think the understanding uh, of an uh, ordinary American citizen about Afghanistan is increased, uh, considering the fact that we are a small country. We are mm -hmm. far away from the United States. 9-11, uh, unfortunately, put that on the map for so many Americans, huh? And we only saw the, it was all about the Taliban, it was all about bin Laden, it was all about Al-Qaeda. So we've made a heavy, heavy investment there. Has that investment paid off? For Afghanistan or for yeah. the United States? For Both. Afghanistan. Both. For Afghanistan, certainly it did. And, uh, and for Afghanistan, the United States did not start actually with 9-11. With, with the United States involvement back in the 1960s, the visits of our king actually to Washington, and a number of the projects that the U.S. implemented in Afghanistan, most importantly, United, United States support for our resistance against the Soviet Union. So there was a, a bond of uh, friendship and, 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 and uh, mutual uh, relations, although in smaller circle uh, mm -hmm. initially. But the war actually brought it to a much larger uh, circle because uh, hundreds of thousands of Americans served in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The investment in Afghanistan have cer certainly has paid off. If you look today in, in Afghanistan, not only in big cities like Kabul or Kandahar or Mazar, the country has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. uh, How so? For instance, I, I was in Herat uh, four months ago, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, with the, uh, sitting down with the uh, students of the University of Herat. They were complaining, but they were mm -hmm. complaining about the internet being too slow. Uh -huh. This is a drastic difference. This is a new Afghanistan. I, in, in, in Mazar, actually, when you try, I, on my last trip again, during the lunchtime uh, when I was traveling actually from one point to another for a meeting, the schools were getting off and all these children wearing school uniforms, getting out of the school with their parents waiting to pick them up with their cell phones. This is what's not in Afghanistan that existed 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. People are better connected, people are better educated, uh, especially the role of the young Afghans if the woman has drastically changed. Mm -hmm. I know that you and your wife are very committed uh, to uh, women's rights and women's progress. Uh, is that at risk now of changing uh, as America is leaving? To a certain degree, yes, because a lot of our accomplishments were due to the, your investment, your support, and mm -hmm. support of the rest of the world, especially in the education. Mm -hmm. And we are not there 100% to sustain ourselves, uh, for instance, there is an American University of Afghanistan, an incredibly successful institution that when I visit Kabul, I go there and I teach. And, and honestly, when I speak there, the caliber of the discussion is not that different from, from John Hopkins or Tufts University or any other U.S. university. It's mm -hmm. very promising. And these young Afghans are better educated. Uh, that everything is taught in English. But yet, on the long term, if the international assistance is not there, such institution may not be able to sustain themselves. So that's why we do need certain degree of assistance to, to, big, to bring these investments into full uh, uh, fruit. Uh, how about uh, what has it meant uh, for the United States as far as their investment there? How have we benefited? 
Well, we have prevented another drastic uh, catastrophe like 9-11. I think uh, the capabilities of the United States uh, security and armed forces as far as containing and fighting terrorism has increased drastically. Uh, unfortunately, many, many uh, Americans have lost their life to accomplish mm -hmm. this objective. But let, don't forget that, that, that we are much safer than we were before. And we uh, and the United States and the U.S. armed forces have prevented another catastrophe and have actually much better capabilities to respond to similar threat all over the world. Uh -huh. uh, you used the word we, uh, as, as, uh, as Americans would uh, use the word we. Uh, what is your status as far as... Uh, Afghan uh, and the uh, United States? No, I, I'm an Afghan, uh, but when I use we, I mean people who, uh, who share a common vision for safety and security mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and are mutually threatened by extremism, by terrorism, by insecurity, and in the case of Afghanistan, uncertainty. Ah, I want to talk about the Taliban when we come back on the other side, but I want to talk to the folks at home and tell them we were talking with uh, former uh, ambassador from uh, Afghanistan to the United States. Uh, his name is uh, Saeed uh, Jawad, and uh, he served as ambassador from Afghanistan to the United States 2003 through 2010, uh, also chairman of the uh, Afghanistan Foundation, uh, involved in uh, the future of Afghanistan through uh, his own company, uh, capitalize and also as an advisor to uh, uh, APCO, APCO Worldwide. So we're going to take a little break, come back on the other side. This is America and the World. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust, and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. Taliban, back then and Taliban today, uh, help us understand, because they are the, the organization that always seems to be in the picture and, from our point of view, maybe always causing the trouble. Huh? That's, that's true, although they are not uh, one single group, but um, as you have mentioned, 9-11, when the United States came to Afghanistan, they successfully eliminated the threat of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But Taliban unfortunately found uh, refuge, uh, ideological, financial, and logistical support outside Afghanistan. They continue to be trained in Pakistan and sent to Afghanistan. And uh, we still uh, face this, this threat, uh, part of it, uh, also due to the fact that the Afghan government uh, were never able to deliver full capability to deliver services and to provide protection to the Afghan people. Mm -hmm. And that uncertainty, that vacuum, it provided a room for the Taliban who are well-trained, uh, well-equipped, uh, to come from across the border and, uh, and, and establish a presence inside Afghanistan. How many are there? Uh, hard to say exactly, but definitely less than 30 to 35,000 dollars, uh, 30 to 35,000 people. Uh -huh. uh, uh, majority of their leaderships are outside Afghanistan. Uh, their fighters are fighting seasonally. Uh, they are not necessarily actually full-time fighters. Sometimes they, they, they go and, 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 and have a job uh, in, in, in Afghanistan or outside Afghanistan mm -hmm. and then pick up the arms when convenient. Is, is it a, a religious-based group? They, of course, they use uh, Islam and, and certain, also sometimes uh, nationalism is a, is a base for recruitment, but if you look into into their uh, composition uh, more uh, deeply, uh, there are many groups that are operating for benefits, groups that are benefiting from narcotics, groups that are have mm -hmm. uh, criminal affiliations. 
as well as uh, groups that have uh, ideological motivation for their fight. So is it wrong to call them uh, like uh, Islamic terrorists or something like that, or should they just be labeled extremists or terrorists? They do terrorize the Afghan people, but uh, unfortunately the term terrorist has a meaning that a group that poses a threat to the West or to the United States. Uh -huh. Uh, so for us, uh, a group that burned a school, that, 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 that uh, conduct a suicide attack inside the mosque is a terrorist, no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, they ruled the country for a while, didn't they? For five or six years, uh, 96 or something like that, to 2005. Three years, yes. Uh, and there was sh Sharia law. How did that go down in Afghanistan? They, they tried to rule Afghanistan. They never actually fully ruled Afghanistan or provided a clear system of governance. As far as uh, Sharia rule, there are so many interpretations of what really it means. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there are many countries now in, in the world, uh, including uh, some really uh, Islamic advanced countries that are uh, claiming to have a uh, Sharia rule in their, in their system. So but that it's very conservative, isn't it, we the, would think? Huh? Their, their interpretation of Islam is very rigid. Uh, it's very conservative. Beards, don't fly the kites, no music, women in the home, huh? True, true. These are, yeah, because these are very simple uh, But how issues. does that go down with the, with the general population of, uh, of Afghanistan? Well, if uh, it's not a popular uh, issue, they, they never, it's, it's very obvious actually if they, there's no popular support for it. But when you, when you have a uh, strong ideological uh, conviction and you have uh, money and weapon, you do get people on your side by, by terrorizing them, by, by victimizing them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why the support that exists for them is mainly due to the fact that people do not see another outlet, another hope of protection so if, if, if the Afghan government, for instance, were able to provide better protection, better services, there is, there is no, there's no room for Taliban to be there because they're not a mystery. The Afghan people know exactly what kind of misery they bring to the people. They were a government in Afghanistan, so people know what they're going to get in return. But, but, but the Taliban seems to um, uh, have uh, insinuated themselves into the society in which the uh, people are afraid, huh? and rightly people are so. A, people are afraid. People are not properly educated. They use, the, like many other uh, uh, Islamist uh, movement, uh, wicked, uh, wrong interpretation of religion, uh, uh, and to justify their position, mm -hmm. to justify their atrocities, to justify their ideology. And that's not unique to Afghanistan. Same thing is happening in, in Pakistan, in Saudi Arabia, in many other parts of the world. But in Afghanistan, since there's been so much of invasion of weapon and, 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 and violence since the Soviet invasion. Uh -huh. That mixture of ideology and, and, and the weapon and, and access to, to, to lethal uh, weapons makes it a lot more dangerous, a lot more uh, uh, lethal for the country. But there was a, a, a strong link between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and bin Laden, right? And, and my philosophy is that bin Laden really sold a lot of people to, a bill of goods by uh, kind of cloaking it under the uh, guise of uh, religion. Yes, hmm? yes, yes. And, uh, yes. Of, of course, the Taliban were were giving an opportunity to turn in uh, Bin Laden, for instance, before actually United States uh, start uh, the military operation in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they refused. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, President Karzai, because uh, you have been very close to him. Uh, press secretary for a while, uh, chief of staff, director of international relations. Uh, you coordinated uh, with the military. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, the economist, I think, in, uh, in, it, it uses the phrase bewildering. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't quite get a sense because the relationship right now between Afghanistan, or at least Karzai and Obama, uh, Afghanistan, and the United States is at a new low, isn't it? That's true. That's um, after the uh, second term where when President Karzai uh, was elected, uh, the relations between him and uh, Ambassador Holbrook and, and, and certain other officials of the U.S. government become really complicated. And, and, and gradually for, for President Karzai, it turned into a, a personal 
uh, vendetta complex because he thought that, that he was uh, deprived of his legitimacy as an elected president of the country uh, when there were allegations that there was extensive fraud in the elections. Is there? Uh, was there? No election is perfect in, in nowhere in the world, uh, particularly not in Afghanistan. Uh, so he didn't think he was getting his just due, right? His just respect, huh? Just respect. And, and of course, the way it worked before this, that uh, the United States and Karzai worked so closely that he was uh, very much used to a close degree of cooperation, of approval uh, of, by the United States. So when this changed, he could not adjust to that change of attitude. But it, it, help me understand, Ambassador, if I'm right on this, that, that the people of Afghanistan, Afghanistan don't like it uh, that their leader would be beholden to an outside power. Is that true? No, that's not true. No? That's not true. No, that's because people of Afghanistan were, were, were victimized, were terrorized uh, by forces that were supported by our neighboring countries. We endured the civil war where different factions mm -hmm. of Afghanistan were supported by different countries in our neighborhood. So after 9-11, when the United States came to Afghanistan, for Afghanistan, it was a source of hope that now with the U.S. presence, with the, with the involvement of the international community, things are going to change for, for good, for positive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the fact that President Karzai was affiliated with the United States, was supported by the United States, and even by brought, was brought into power by the United States yes. was not a liability, and it's still not. In fact, last December, just this, this December, I was a delegate in the Grand Council that was convened in Kabul to debate the future of the bilateral security agreement. Right. There was very strong support for the U.S. presence in the country, and especially that support was coming from provinces like Kandahar and Helmand which is in the southern Afghanistan, which are Pashtun provinces, and with the provinces that most of the fighting takes place. Because those people are suffering more from the war than anyone else in big cities. So, so the people really uh, uh, want the United States present. But here we have this uh, BSA, this yes. uh, bilateral security and uh, 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 agreement, and Karzai doesn't want to sign it. Yeah, no. So let me ask you this. What does President Karzai want? What does President Obama want? Well, the, the, the reason that, that Karzai doesn't want to sign it, it's personal. It's, it's really not a national agenda because the Afghan people have spoken very clearly and, twice. And, and, the, and the big group of the 2,500, they want it signed. They right? want it signed. And they, they even asked President Karzai to sign it before the end of the year, yeah. which was December. Yes. The Afghan parliament have, have approved it. There was another council, actually, that convened in May of 2000. But what's uh, going on with him? Uh, I think, as I mentioned, it's personal. A couple of things, uh, and as you mentioned, since I've worked with him and I know him, actually, yeah. it's, it's more of a, an issue of, of personality of President Karzai. First, he is not uh, comfortable uh, to be uh, a military leader. He is, although he is actually the commander-in-chief of the Afghan Armed Forces, is president of Afghanistan, he has never actually visited an Afghan uh, army barrack. He is, is, when General Patreos and General McChrystal uh, were leading, actually, the military efforts in Afghanistan, they were trying to have him sign off on the military operation yes. as his commander of chief. He wouldn't show up. He wouldn't, he would, he would find the excuses of being ill or not being around, not to go to these meetings to really sign off the military, because he's not, he's not this kind of person. He's not comfortable. He never actually showed gratitude to the Afghan uh, security forces who are dying in Afghanistan. Mm. He, he, so he's not comfortable to sign an agreement where, where it's mostly a, 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 the most important component of which is U.S. military presence. That's right. one reason. Second, I think naturally he thinks if he signs this agreement, then he will be an irrelevant lame duck president. Well, he is kind of anyway, isn't he? We got elections in April. He might hang on for a while while they do a second round, but sooner or later he's going to have to leave, huh? Unfortunately, in our parts of the world, uh, huh? a lot of the leaders have difficulty giving up, uh, giving up, and knowing that that their departure from the political scene is as important as far as determining their legacy as it is their entry into the political scene. Help me, uh, Ambassador, understand this, if, if, I, if I understand it. The reason that Obama wants the uh, ten to 12,000 troops, although we hope that he wants them, or we think that that's what he wants, um, protection of the drone bases, uh, protection of gains already made, uh, training of the police and the military. Have I left something out there? 
Well, uh, what is key for, for Afghan also is also intelligence, is intelligence in the area. gathering, uh, the, um, really diminishing the capabilities, further diminishing the capabilities of the Taliban. Because if the mission is defined only in a way that protects uh, the interest of the United States, then the ordinary Afghan does not see themselves as part of this arrangement. I so see, I the see. definition of the mission should include benefits to the Afghan people. Like, which is, like, like, like what? For, uh, for instance, uh, it, uh, making sure that Taliban does not gain, actually, dominance in certain areas yes, by staying, yes, yes, providing, yes. providing support uh, to the Afghan security forces, which is key. And our, our forces, we are very proud of what, what's been accomplished with the Afghan army and police force. They are fighting very mm -hmm. effectively. They are brave. Uh, in the average, Three uh, army or, pol or police officers are dying every day in Afghanistan. This is a very high toll. Mm. But still, uh, they are not there 100 percent. They do need, actually, capabilities to gather intelligence, logistical support, airlift, that we, we are we're hoping that part of the U.S. presence will accomplish that objective. If, uh, if, if, if it all works out, whether now or later, and it may be the signing of the BSA, is later on under a new uh, regime, under a new uh, uh, president. Uh, but if something would happen and we would leave altogether and there would be no troops there, even though we're not there to fight, we're there to train and protect yeah. certain gains, um, what would happen? Would the Taliban swoop in? And they're going to try anyway, aren't they? They will try, but they will not succeed. Uh, actually, what is... Uh, what is, is the military and the police strong enough to repel them now? The courage and capabilities are there, for sure. But uh, it would the financial means to sustain these forces will be in place, that's uh -huh. key. Uh -huh. So it's important to, to have the necessary financial resources also to make sure that these uh, forces uh, continue to have those capabilities that they already acquired. And also, the, uh, what's going to happen in the neighborhoods? There, there are changes in our relation with, in your relation with Iran. Yep. This is key for stability in Afghanistan. There is uh, Pakistan roles, uh, end of the day. We hope, actually, that Pakistan will realize that a, a stable uh, and pluralistic Afghanistan is to their benefit. And they don't have to have a, a regime uh, like the Taliban regime in Afghanistan in order to gain the friendship of the Afghan people. Uh, there are many Afghans who want to have good relations with Pakistan, and, uh -huh. and Taliban uh, are not the only people that, that, that Pakistan think that could actually uh, be their friends. Uh, we we want to have very good relations with all of our neighbors. We, we want to we change this, this, this dynamism of, of thinking too much politically or living in the history. We are looking forward. We want to we wanna think economically. End of the day, if the borders between Afghanistan and Pakistan are open and secure, every Afghan, every Pakistani, everyone in the region will benefit. Does Pakistan want a strong Afghanistan, or is it better for them to have a weak Afghanistan? They, they prefer a weak Afghanistan yeah, they that's do, dependent they? on Pakistan. And also they... Because? Because? Why do they want it? Because uh, Pakistan thinks that the main threat uh, to Pakistan is India. Mm -hmm. and, and in a strong, stable Afghanistan, will align itself with India, which is a miscalculation. Uh, first, and we know, actually, that we do need very good relation with Pakistan. And, and almost, as I mentioned, almost every Afghan wants to have good relation with Pakistan based on economic benefit for both parties. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Taliban are as much as dangerous for Pakistan and Pakistani people as they are for Afghans. Uh, President Karzai wants or is negotiating with the Taliban, wants the United States to negotiate with the Taliban. And we say, no, 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 no way. That's causing some problems, isn't it? The, the, what's, what's Karzai's <coughs> uh, motivation there? The, the whole issue of reconciliation is, is mishandled from the beginning. First, uh, President Karzai made many concessions by, for instance, asking the delisting of the Taliban leaders from UN. The response of the Taliban was killing our former president, President Rabani, killing President Karzai's mm -hmm. brother in mm -hmm. Kandahar, mm -hmm. and a very effective leader. Uh, so uh, there is no really clear vision on what do we want as part of the reconciliation. When you reconcile, you have to keep the military pressure on. At the same time, both part, uh, Afghanistan, in particular the United States, should define that what are they giving up in, in exchange for, uh, for reconciliation with Taliban. Mm. So this has, not been, this has not been defined. And 
the, every time that the United States makes some progress in, 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 in talking with certain elements of the Taliban, Afghan government gets very nervous and it says, what's going on? That's why when the United States helped open the Qatar office, yep. Afghan government said, oh, close it down, we don't want it. And when Afghans are making some progress, U.S. Uh, said, well, we are not involved, we really don't know what's going on. And in the middle of all of that, Pakistanis are watching very closely and they said, anything that is not under our control is not permitted. That's the Pakistan position. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, and online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.